Picture this. You're a scientist on an isolated asteroid research facility, and thanks to an outbreak of parasites that you've been researching, there is now one burrowing into your brain. Everyone's been turned into mutated freakazoids, and to make it all worse, three of your limbs have been ripped clean off, leaving just your right arm. I'm Mac, and I've got your back. This is Jetavision's review of Endoparasitic. In Endoparasitic, you play as a cynical, egotistical scientist named Sint. And, well, he's not in a very desirable position if you couldn't tell. Despite this, he's not too concerned about his set of circumstances as he drags his way through the facility. As you pulled yourself through the infested halls, you begin to piece together everything going on here. The story is light but solid, easy to follow despite an indirect method of storytelling, and keeps you interested from beginning to end. We especially liked the contrast of the main character's dreadful predicament and his attitude. How could I have been wrong? This thing is trying to kill me when I should have been its host, its ally. Despite his situation, he's still this no-nonsense guy who's gonna get to the bottom of this mess. We cannot afford to stop our research here. Albeit in an asshole way. Please help me. You're past any help I could give you. All you can do now is pray. Not too much to remark on the story. It's alright, the only negative remark I'd really have is this whole thing where the various characters worship different gods tailored to their personality. Like, Sint is a follower of Nal, god of cognition and skill. There's a character named Lucy who follows Pierde, the goddess of light and love or something. We found that to be a little much, kind of cringe honestly. The graphics work, simple, 2D pixelated sprites, paired with the sterile environment you'd expect from a research facility. Gameplay, however, is where endoparasitic shines. The entirety of the game is played exclusively with your mouse on account of your missing limbs. You move by using your mouse to drag yourself across the floor, and reloading is done manually as you have to individually discard used cartridges and replace them yourself, meaning it's not so much timing a reload animation as it is how fast you yourself can get those bullets loaded in. Being that the game's controls are quite unique, they initially took some time to get used to. Like, you can't hold a weapon and move at the same time. You have to holster your weapon to move, then pull it out out when you want to shoot. And in the late game, when your body is just absolutely covered with guns, it can be hard to grab the one you need for the situation. These aren't that big of deals, and it's frankly to be expected from such an unorthodox control scheme, but it's still worth noting. We really ended up liking this method of control. It's unique, adds to the immersion, and paired with the limited visibility, makes the player feel quite vulnerable, as they have to juggle keeping their distance from enemies while reloading and fighting. The only real complaint we have of it, outside of gameplay, is that, you know, when you're making these fast, repetitive motions, with the same arm, it puts quite the strain on it. Which is probably the most privileged complaint we've ever made on this channel. Oh, boo-hoo, my arm hurts from playing video games, oh. Munition storage is quite limited, so if you're not careful or of good aim, you'll be in danger of running out quite fast. Different munitions take up varying amounts of space, so you'll have to choose them wisely to take on the various threats lying throughout the facility. Health is determined by this parasite automatically moving towards your brain over time time, as indicated by your character coughing up blood. But it'll also gain significant distance if you get attacked by an enemy. But if you have a vaccine, you can inject it right in that sucker to temporarily set it back. We get what they were going for here. The steadily decreasing health bar is intended for the player to move through the game at a faster pace, giving them no time to breathe or understand their surroundings. However, for the majority of the game, health really wasn't a problem. We rarely found ourselves losing too much health, and were thus able to keep a steady supply for the majority of the game. The only time we found ourselves worrying about health was towards the end of the game. That's when vaccines really started to be withheld from the player, and that annoying ass teleporting enemy certainly does not help. The level design is also really good. You can really tell the person who made them knew what they were doing. Most levels are linear, but even the ones that require you to take a detour to open a door or whatnot retain the player's sense of direction thanks to these wires they can follow. The levels also manage to keep the game feeling fresh from beginning to end, with many of them having different challenges to overcome. One of the more memorable levels was this one where you're in this long hallway getting chased by those mutated dudes and you have to collect ammo as you retreat and shoot while getting chased. In another, you're forced to release a bunch of mutated scientists and you'll have to drag yourself around the room, keeping your distance to thin the herd. Other than that, new enemy types are slowly introduced throughout, so it really keeps you on your toes as you listen closely for their sound cues. 
for this reason, we never really found ourselves growing fatigued with the game. It helps that it's overall appropriately short. At around 3 hours, it doesn't overstay its welcome at all. But there is some replayability. There's a hard mode, which saves the game less often, and divvies out less ammo and vaccines. More interesting, however, is the endemic mode, which is this sort of dungeon crawler roguelike thing. The core gameplay remains the same. Drag yourself around the map, manage inventory, kill enemies, and stick a needle into your brain burrowing parasite. You have to go through these different sections of the level to reach these switches, which are used to open the level's ending. Along the way, you'll also be able to upgrade your character, ranging from obtaining new weapons, getting thorns which damage the enemy if they attack you, or being able to light stuff on fire with your mere touch. But as you get stronger, so too do the enemies. With each level beaten, the enemies get upgrades, like being able to take more damage, developing mutations which allow them to explode upon death, or being able to camouflage themselves. And on every third level, you'll have to go up against a boss to clear the stage. The main game, in our opinion, is enough to provide a fulfilling experience. But if you enjoyed the game to want more out of it, these modes will definitely do the job. Endoparasitic was a really great experience. A novel control scheme paired with competently designed levels makes for a good time for what it is. Genovision's score is an 8 out of 10. At a reasonable price of admission of $10, we find the game extremely easy to recommend. So, if it looks interesting, go ahead and check it out. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a review from the Genovision. If you'd like to keep up to date on our latest, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac G's to Genovision, signing out. You all have a good one. Yeah.